what is going on guys uh it's been a long time since i made a video and uh i'm excited to be back and uh i wanted to sort of uh, give a, a first video on a little bit as to what i've been working on uh that uh that is more in a, a new domain more towards health and i want to give some a little bit of motivation as to why i i'm gonna be doing that and then also like the motivation for me and then uh, we're gonna go into some some tracking that i've been doing in the last uh i would say three months at least seriously and then um kind of give you a little bit of a snapshot of my journey that i'm currently on and i was thinking i'll give updates uh regularly so that people can follow that progress and uh perhaps they can also find that inspiring or i don't know interesting in some way but um yeah so basically you know i i think i, I came into some kind of realization at some point that uh health is kind of fundamental to everything that we do and so i think at, at some point right everyone wants to uh feel as good as they can right that's what we're doing in life i guess like we're trying to do things and eventually we'll uh try to improve our well-being uh happiness so on right and i think um you know there, there's there's a lot of things to health uh there's a lot of a lot of suffering associated to bad bad health uh not uh, you know especially as we age and there's a lot that we can do to sort of extend our lifespan you know there's a whole movement towards that uh, you know don't die and um stuff like that but even in, when you're young uh like most of the people watching this channel there's a lot we can do to optimize health by actually and this is what i'm working on which i'm very excited to start sharing stuff you know um what i'm building and, and how people can start using it and so on but that's a little bit in the future as to how we can uh, objectively measure uh our, our health and so if we have you know if we start with having some si some kind of objective measure then we can optimize it right that's kind of the basics of ml and so uh that's um a little bit of what i'm working on and what i've been trying to start doing with tracking stuff um but yeah as i said i i, I yeah i think i was working in a corporate and uh actually over the year that i worked um i gained uh 20 pounds <laughs> in weight and uh i don't know how that happened to be honest i guess you know uh to be honest i didn't even look at it and you know you kind of ignore it and not that i really had any substantial health uh like negatives they will probably come at a later point right a couple of maybe 10 15 years down the line perhaps but it did it doesn't impact you know energy levels throughout the day and how you're sort of feeling um, how many, how, you know, how often you get sick, all of these things, right? So health is really fundamental and um, it makes sense to optimize it. Let's just put it that way. So that's what I want to get into. Um, let's start with this kind of plot that I have here, which is uh, a little bit of an overview of, of stuff that I've been tracking. So over the, as I said, over the last three months, I've been starting to track using, you know, we have um, smartwatches that can track these things now and start to make sense of that data and then um, um, and try to optimize it through behavior changes and, and, and see that. So uh, one of those, right, is the daily total sleep. Um, I've also been looking into my daily resting heart rate. Uh, and so if we look at, for example, uh, sleep here, then I mean, these are uh, actually I found them very difficult to to analyze. Uh, it's very hard to see trends uh, when things vary quite a bit. Um, and so what I really want to look at is this uh, monthly averages. I think those are really what you need to look at for behavior changes because these things do take time. So over these last three months now, I've started as a pretty decent uh, sleep baseline, I would say, of having, you know, 7.6 hours of, of sleep per, per night on average. Uh, but this month you know i've increased it to 8.7 um this that that's actually i would say like a little bit of a high sleep amount um and uh, i'm still trying to optimize it actually i have sometimes i find myself waking up uh and i think that 
uh, the fact that I do wake up uh, makes it so that I have to um, compensate a little bit by sleeping longer because my sleep quality is not going to be as high um, looking at sort of the deep and REM sleep amount. So, yeah, I think probably for me, like eight and a half hours is an optimal amount, but at least, you know, that's one almost one hour uh, increase from when I started. And if we look at um, monthly average of resting heart rate as well, then uh, I started in March uh, having a resting heart rate of 71. Now, there's a lot of stuff we can go into here as well. I'm going to make upcoming videos on, you know, how do we measure this uh, because uh, I do actually have uh, both Apple Watch now and, and a Whoop. But, uh, you know, depending on how you measure, it's going to be higher or lower. Um, and so I, I do a manual reading every morning. And so that's how I measure it. And it's going to be a little bit higher than if you would do it during nighttime, which is what Whoop does and so on. Uh, but uh, I started at 71. And then uh, actually I started doing uh, cardio a lot during these three months here. But as we can see, it actually didn't improve that much we saw like a two percent uh improvement 0 0.1 0 0.5 0 0.1 and so it's really like two beat difference you know um which is not a lot uh, especially considering that i started at quite a high amount a high value you know 71 is definitely i would say on the higher end but uh, this last month i've taken sort of quite uh big big boy changes i i call them which is a uh, I've started to track my calories now actually and to make sure that I'm losing weight every every week. And uh, yeah, so that's now this month is in the lowest, which is uh, 63. And uh, looking at, you know, heart rate variability, um, if there are people who are not familiar with these metrics, I'll try to make videos going into them uh, because they're sort of the fun foundation to the approach that I'm using, which is also what pretty much all the other, you know, smart uh, watches do as well uh, but uh, as we can see uh, monthly averages from March April and May they're pretty static at 30 is pretty interestingly actually that they're uh, coming to 38 at each of them um, and then we see a dip in June which is because I actually I traveled a lot in June and interesting to see that that actually impacted quite a lot um, and I could feel it too actually uh, during that month that you know, uh, when I wasn't home, I could feel that I was a little bit of a higher stress on the on the body. Um, but then, yeah, interestingly, you know, this month as well, we can see as I've gotten decreased my resting heart rate, I've also increased my HRV quite a lot. Um, so, um, yeah, things are basically, I would say, getting to move a lot more in the right direction after taking diet into consideration. So... There's only so much you can change, I guess, from exercise um, and you really make the biggest changes, um, like the fastest change by changing your actual body weight, especially if you're overweight, uh, which I am. Um, I probably would want to lose a total of you know 20 pounds uh, that would make me in the sort of the best BMI range, at least. And uh body fat composition uh, or body composition and so on as i said or over the last uh month uh i've actually started tracking my uh, calories and uh, being a lot more strict with that so i said uh i adjusted based on my weight decrease which is i'm aiming of about you know 0 0.5 to i think i'm aiming for about currently one percent of my body weight per week um and then i'll decrease it as i get uh, deeper into my deficit or calorie deficit so um, I'm trying to aim now for 2,300 calories. Uh, it, as we can see, like some days it, it's more, uh, some days are, are a bit less. And there's also some issue or I've done some error in how I'm actually, uh, you know, um, sorry, how I'm actually uh, weighing everything in the, in the way that um, sometimes, you know, if I have 100 calories extra, uh, or if I've eaten 2,200, I'll have like a fruit or something and I, I won't bother to to track it, which uh, I'll improve moving forward. But uh, that's why we can also see like some stuff changes here. But on average, it's about 2,300 calories. And obviously, since, since since I'm cutting, you know, those those are the two metrics that I'm looking at now, the, the amount of calories I'm getting and the uh, grams of protein. 
uh, I really want to aim for like a minimum of 160 uh, grams per day. Um, as we can see, uh, in, in most days, I'm getting a good amount. Um, some days I'm getting a great amount. Uh, and then some days are really lacking, uh, getting, you know, uh, 100 or 120. Actually, uh, the days that I've get, gotten less than 160 is a pretty high percentage, as we can see here. So that is definitely something I want to improve uh, for sort of um, next sort of review video I do of, of how it's going, because uh, I think that will help sort of um, maintain a lot of uh, muscle mass as I am uh, losing weight. And here is also an interesting kind of, uh, look at it, which is, um, since I'm tracking everything, right. Um, I can also look at the micronutrient intake. And so, uh, you can kind of see like from my averages, if they are, if I basically, if there are things that I'm lacking in my diet and things that I should improve on. So, uh, currently, you know, uh, I'm getting most micronutrients there. There seems to be, um, Vitamin D, I'm not too concerned about as I'm out, you know, in the sun quite a bit. But interestingly, I'm getting quite low vitamin D uh, and then vitamin A, E and, and potassium. And I think uh, I think basically if I add in some uh, green vegetables like uh, spinach and broccoli and maybe some carrots, that'll help basically uh, improve these. As I said, I've not always been the best at tracking too. So... I mean, this is the best estimate I can get to, obviously. But since uh, in many cases, vegetables are basically very low calories, I haven't always bothered to measure them. So it could be a little bit error prone. But, uh, you know, I do not. I actually know that I'm not I'm not eating any broccoli or spinach, basically, in my diet uh, or carrots. So if I basically just introduce those, it'll be, uh, you know, uh, a guaranteed way to 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 improve those micronutrients. And one thing as well is that we can see that during these days, uh, the average says 2,167. As I said, I think it is probably a bit higher, actually pretty sure, you know, it's 2,000, about 2,300 per day, which is what I'm aiming for. Um, and then I'll probably decrease that in, a, in you know, maybe in like a one and a half month or one in one, one month, maybe uh, as I get deeper into the deficit. To maintain as much muscle mass as you can, uh, which is, uh, you know, important. I'm doing a lot of cardio, zone two and interval cardio um, to try to improve, you know, my cardiovascular fitness. Um, I haven't measured VO2 max or anything like that yet, but uh, I'm also doing strength training. So, you know, as I am losing weight, I've lost about 10 pounds or eight pounds, I would say, so far. Um, and so uh, during, anyways, during... You can ignore the dates on the bottom here, but basically uh, the progress that I'm seeing from week to week of uh, my uh, strength 1RM estimates for my lifts. So let's look at bench press. I started with having a 1RM estimate of about 95 kilogram and uh, the latest, you know, two is about 115 and 112 maybe or something like that. Uh, so, you know, overall progress on that is uh, about... 16 kilogram increase in the 1RM estimate. Uh, these are basically from three reps and five reps uh, and then estimate the 1RM. Uh, and for those curious, I don't know how many people are into strength training that much, but I'm currently doing the five, uh, 531 uh, Wendler program uh, for um, improving my strength. So uh, for deadlift progression, we can see uh, also like a pretty good stable uh, pretty slow progression here until the last session, which was actually just two days ago. Uh, and so we can see I basically have been started with the 130 kilogram and then uh, slowly increasing. Uh, and then latest was about 160, 17, 165 over 165 uh, kilogram for 1RM. Uh, I mean, the total uh, doesn't really matter here, right? Like the actual thing that I want is that as I am decreasing body weight, uh, I want to uh, improve uh, my strength level or at least maintain it. So, you know, obviously, uh, as I get lose and lose more and more, uh, uh, some of the, some of that is probably going to be muscle uh, and you get lethargic as you get into a deficit um, over a longer term. 
So if I can maintain level, that's good. Uh, but if I can continue to make progress like this, then that's great. And uh, similarly for, um, you know, uh, the uh, shoulder press started about a bit over 60 kilograms and now it's almost, you know, in the uh, 68 kilograms. So, you know, a small increase and uh, it has looked a little bit strange here. Um, I actually do know why it decreased here, though, uh, that we see that it's increasing quite steadily here and then it's a dip and it went back. I think uh, this week I did uh, a MMA workout just before I did the actual uh, strength session. So I was very fatigued uh, when I did the session. But um, yeah, so that's probably it. Uh, and then for uh, squats, very sort of good, clear trend here as well. Started at around 115, been increasing to uh, over 135. Um, yeah, for, for one my 1RM one estimate. Uh, note that this, these are just like 1RM estimates. I don't actually... I don't want to increase, you know, risk of injury. So I never, I very rarely, very rarely do one, one RM specifically. I try to stay in the, you know, at least three plus rep range. All right. Uh, this was a little bit of a, a little bit over the place, you know, an introduction to what I've been up to a little bit of a review of my current uh, health journey. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to try to do uh, one of these like monthly summaries of how it went this month. And, um, uh, uh, basically keep myself accountable but you know looking back uh, all I've ever done on this channel is to document what I'm doing what I'm up to what I'm learning uh, and share that with you guys and uh, in, in the hope that somebody finds it interesting uh, and uh, that you know it's uh, valuable to to uh, to the people watching so uh, yeah thank you so much for watching the video and uh, I have I, I there's so many videos I can make now uh, you know, uh, I'm also working on uh, at, at my own startup, Nanai, which is, you know, trying to also build tools to help with measuring health and making health an objective marker and then being able to uh, track progress and then ultimately, you know, recommend uh, decisions as to what the data is telling us. Uh, so that's sort of the long term vision there. And, and uh, I'm excited to start sharing more of that. But uh, this is just sort of an introductory uh, video. Um, anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you uh, in the next video.